Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Sitting here with the author of Johnny Carson, a new book about Johnny Carson. A lot of great stuff in here. Uh, Henry Bushkin is with us. You say you have a great story uh, involving the owner of the Lakers and Johnny Carson, the owner of the Lakers, Jerry sure, Buss. The, the late Jerry Buss. Johnny and uh, Jerry Buss were partners in the L.A. Strings. That was the original World Team Tennis League Okay. that oh. started in the 70s. Yeah, he's a big tennis guy, Johnny Carson. Right? Yeah. Big tennis right. guy. Jerry Buss was a big tennis guy. And you're and, a tennis guy. And too. I'm a tennis guy. So we were obviously made for each other in that sense. Right. But Jerry Buss had just bought the Lakers. So he he paid $60 million for the Lakers plus the four. It's a bargain. Yeah, that was the deal then. So Jeez. I said to Johnny, you know, why don't we get some floor seats from this guy? You know, like uh, big-time team now. You know, yeah, Magic, they, Kareem. Right. Mm -hmm. By the way, my office represented Kareem and oh. Shaquille. Wow. Nice. For a while. <laughs> uh, oh. in, in, in any event, Jerry Buss... Just bought the Lakers. We're partners in team tennis. And we're now getting floor seats at the Lakers, at the Forum, right at the golden age of the Lakers. So I said to Johnny, look, now that we're partners in tennis, how about the Lakers? Why don't you buy into the Lakers? Because he paid $60 million, Buy in 10%. Sure. Be a partner. He said, but I have to go to every Laker game. I said, no, you don't. You don't have to go to every Laker game. I love that's how he speaks. No, you don't have to go, you know? He said, no, no, they'd expect me to go. I said, okay, we got floor seats. We'll see how it goes. So the wind up of the story was, we never made the investment. And he went to one Laker game in seven years. <laughs> uh, we had the tickets for seven years oh on the floor. God. Yeah, I was just saying, you never saw Johnny Carson at a Laker game? On the floor. Yeah. Seven years. Went to one game. So he had the Nicholson seats, basically. Did no, 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 no. The we, same we, type we, of we seat. Were, we were right next to John McEnroe, Glenn Fry of the Eagles. Right. Yeah, oh. Right in the corner. The itchy bond seats, as we would say. Right. <laughs> because, of course, Jerry wanted Johnny to be happy. He came to one game. Uh, Tell us a, 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 a little. I love that he thinks that way. I'm, I'm the same way when you think about about commitments. Like you know, hey, you want me to go to every game, you know, blah, blah, blah. and still another great piece of advice by you, business wise. Could you imagine? I mean, sixty million, but the Lakers are probably worth a billion well, dollars. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the six million that we would have paid would be worth. Oh 100. my God, nothing. Um, uh, this uh, yeah. another great start here. It's just another example of of what could have been that didn't happen, but he still died worth a lot of money. He was fine. Another great story here um, about uh, this night at uh, Chasen's when supposedly he got drunk and uh, Chasen's a legendary uh, uh, Hollywood uh, restaurant. He, uh, when uh, what you call bad Johnny, I guess when he's drinking, he was there and he tried to attack another late night talk show host. Do you know who that was? Can you say who that was? Yeah, it was Tom Snyder. Okay. <laughs> who had a show following Johnny's at the time. Right. And this was the night of the Emmy Awards and, and Johnny had hosted the Emmy Awards, and for about the fifth or sixth year in a row, he didn't win an Emmy, mm -hmm. you know? Best show, best writing, it, you know. David Letterman won regularly years right. later, but Johnny, up to all, never, never got recognized. So this was one of those evenings he didn't win and he was hosting, and he was, he was upset. So this was like late way. 70s we're talking, somewhere around there. Yes, yeah. of course, late yeah. 70s, and we're sitting, and, and wives, and we're all sitting around rather elegant table at Chasen's, and Johnny was drinking, and, and Tom Snyder was across the room, also in tuxedo, also having come from the Emmys, and, and they were both drinking, you know, and, and you know how when you drink, sometimes you start staring at somebody, <laughs> and they start staring back, you uh -oh. know, yeah. and, and that's what happened, <laughs> and Johnny got really aggravated. Uh, and, and his director, a, a guy by the name of Bobby Quinn, uh, used to be an amateur fighter. A little guy, wiry, but tough. Tough Irish guy, the right. his director. And, and he was the guy who went over to Tom Snyder and told him to, you know, really to leave and stop, you know, provoking <laughs> this thing, you know. Mm. <laughs> and, and after a while, that, that, that subsided. You know, that subsided. And... and and, and they laughed about it, I think, afterwards. But, but it was very close to a uh, real tumult, as we would say. So you finally get him out of there. You pour him into a limousine. Uh, he has to jump over the fence at his house. Joanna, his wife at the time, throws him out. The day after, you find them at the Beverly Hills Hotel 
shacked up with one of Joanna's friends? His no, wife's no, friend? I, no, I, I don't think... <laughs> Not shacked up. I, 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 I don't think that's tracking right. You ensconced. Know? What, what, it what says happened, ensconced what, to the Beverly Hills Hotel. What happened that night, we stayed out until 5 or 6 in the morning, and at his house, he had security, he had security guards. He had a security house, security guards, and he decided... He's not going to embarrass himself by letting them know. Oh, okay. Okay, so he snuck into his own house <laughs> at about 5.30 in the morning. That's what happened that evening. I'm yeah. not sure what it, what it well, is. Well, it, it says right here Joanna threw him out or something. And then, uh, uh, that could have been another time, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it happened what, almost regularly. Okay. Right. What about the, the story where he got mob uh, heat? For hitting on uh, like a mob boss's wife. Yeah, that, that was New York. For that one, that was New York. That was New York. That was the late '60s. That was Jilly's, which was a famous. Jilly uh, Rizzo, uh, the famous right-hand man for Sinatra. <laughs> you bet. Mm -hmm. It was on, I think, 52nd and 8th. Right. Uh, a famous watering hole, <clears throat> and and Johnny was in there one night with McMahon, and they try to pick up the wrong girls. Happened to be the wife and sister of. A well-known mafioso wow. type of character, right. okay. who was not sensitive about stuff like <laughs> not happy, not happy, <laughs> irritated, you might say. <laughs> so what happened? I, I, well, what what happened was uh, <clears throat> they went looking for Johnny. Johnny holed up in the apartment at UN Plaza, and <clears throat> in those days there was just recently we had the yesterday the Columbus Day Parade. Well, in those days the Columbus Day Parade was about to come up. It was like three weeks away. Right. And no network would agree to cover it then because they knew it was the five families of New York that were sponsoring this parade to sure. make the Italian Americans uh. look, you know, no, look it was solid. a big no, the Columbus Day Parade was a big deal. It was a big yeah. deal. Yeah. So it was sponsored by the Anti Defamation League, okay, for the Italian Americans. And so nobody would cover it. So Carson's hiding out. And a deal was struck. If NBC covers the parade, they'll let Carson go. So that year, NBC is the only network that covered the parade. Carson <laughs> gets off. <laughs> Hilarious. And the next year, the next year, uh, I think Joe Colombo got got assassinated. Yeah, Colum and, and at, at, at the Paramount parade. Building and the, at the Columbus Circle. They right. Shot him right now. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Unbelievable next year. stuff. <laughs> All right, we got to take uh, got to take another break. Back with Henry Bushkin after this. We'll finish out the hour. Great stuff. Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Not Sitting bad. here with uh, Henry not Bushkin, bad. author of the book Johnny Carson, about Johnny I, I, Carson. I'm not getting anything. Uh, can you... Uh, oh, there I go. You're wild. Well, I got it. Uh, what did he think? You know, we only have a couple minutes left, but again, the book is fascinating. Try to grab this as soon as you can. Johnny Carson is the name, and uh, Henry Bushkin, this is the real deal. This guy who repped Johnny Carson, uh, uh, was a great friend of his, and... Um, uh, what what did, what do you think if you know if you ever had this discussion with him what he really thought of the younger guys coming up when he was there like like Letterman Leno Shanling any guys that you know he really sure. couldn't stand or no. loved in particular it no. seemed he liked Letterman you know? he liked look Letterman worked for him right the hour following Johnny when Letterman worked for him, we owned that hour right and he did a great so, job for did him. a great job but right. then he was an employee he had a, he had a show he was doing he was doing a great job. Gary Shandling was was guest hosting right. on a permanent basis, doing a brilliant job, and probably would have succeeded Johnny if there was in fact a date that Johnny gave him that he would leave. Oh, no you know, kidding! You know, yeah, but that was then. You know, then Shandling left. He started. You know, years later he did the Larry Sanders show, but Gary wouldn't wait around. Okay, and 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 David had his show, and then Jay Leno. Came in after after Joan. Joan then came in. Right. They, then Jay Leno became the permanent guest host. So when I left in '88, Jay was the permanent guest host. Did he dislike Leno? Like from one, I, it seemed at the end he did because it might have happened. But back then, I don't know. I mean, no, 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 no. Probably when not. I know, when I was there, the relationships were terrific. Jay was always accommodating in case of emergency to step in. Right. A terrific relationship. Right. I can't speak about. The end, because I wasn't there. It got way different. Yeah, it I got guess. way different, but it was good when I was there. No now, problem. Carson came out and said you were his best friend, and you found that out <laughs> from like watching TV or something. Right? <laughs> well, from reading the New Yorker. Yeah. Right? Now, and and you were startled by that, which to me says that Johnny Carson was a guy didn't have a lot of friends and 
was a, a lonely guy by choice. Everybody says he sort of was happy with that situation. What kind of a guy? Do you think he was a depressed guy at the no, end? No, like I, I don't think he was he depressed. Was, yeah. I, I think you you could say his personality was not a happy one. Right. But I, I can't. He wasn't depressed. Not was he a but, hard guy to be around? Like or is, not at all. If no. you If you were a friend and you were hanging out with him. You'd have a good time. Yeah. You'd have a good time. You'd, he was a regular guy, right. okay? But you put him around strangers, totally uncomfortable. Mm. You put him in a room of 50 people, 20 of whom he knows and 30 he does, and he's going to retreat somewhere <laughs> and be surrounded by, by his friends so that others can't sort of get close to him. He was that sort of quirky about, uh, you know, be, being surrounded by friends. What comics do you think... Um, like, if he was going to call a guy to go out and get a steak or and a drink with, is Don Rickles a guy on that list? Like, is there, is there anybody on that list? Sure, sure. If, uh, you know, if if everybody were live at the same time... Right. You know, I'd say Jonathan Winters for sure. No kidding. Yeah, for sure. I love hearing that. Yeah, they, they, they grew up in television together in the yeah. 50s, and they hung out a great deal together. And 50s. he was so brilliant on his show. Yeah. They knew how to work with each other. Great. Jonathan Winters was... You know, he was a, an early version... <clears throat> of Robin Williams. Okay. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying better, I'm not saying worse, but Jonathan Winters was, was sensational. And Richard Pryor was another guy that Johnny loved as a comedian. So I would say those two right. would probably be his favorites. Oh, no, that's yeah. interesting to hear. Yeah. That, that, that that's is. an interesting answer. You know, because, again, the Jonathan Winters and Richard Pryor, when they're on that show, you could tell the brilliance of Carson, the way he was with those guys. The way he, inter the way he worked with Jonathan Winters and allowed him to go back and forth, it was so fun. Yeah, but Richard Pryor is one of the few acts that he ever would go out and sit in an audience and see. So Oh, he would actually go and check him yeah, out. He would uh -huh. actually do that. So Ooh. so that's saying a lot for him because he would never sit in an audience because you know, a superstar to go to an audience, uh, it's not possible. It? Henry, listen, I wish we had four hours with you, man, but uh, we're going to push this book even more uh, when you're not here because I, I, I know it's, uh, it's amazing. And it's called Johnny Carson. Please go get this book. Interesting stuff. Henry Bushkin is the author. Henry, come back again and talk to us sometime if, you. you, if you're around. Thank, Thank you, you so much for I coming in. I appreciate it. Thank you very it much. It was a treat. Thank Johnny you. Johnny Carson, check it out. Back after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.